Welcome back to Pop Tab, keeping tabs on all your pop culture topics. I'm your host, Matthew Epp, and joining me today is... Ellie Kirkpatrick. And... Tanner Kinney. Guys, Ellie, you're not in Byte, and Tanner, you are. What do you do? Uh, I am the reviews editor. Wow. I also write reviews, and I also write terrible features. You do. Sometimes. <laughs> Ellie, what do you do? Um... A lot of fun things like sleeping. Well, get a job. Eating. <laughs> you know who else needs to get a job? Kanye West. Oh. He kind of has one. Uh, but an issue he's facing right now is he's not doing well at most things he's doing. Uh, see, Kanye West recently tweeted that he is distancing himself from politics because while he was very involved in politics as of recent, that has not gone so very well for him and he feels that he's been used by politicians. Um, although he didn't name any particular names, uh, people are assuming that this has to do with the GOP because he kind of out of nowhere got really involved with a lot of Republican politicians. Uh, so what are you guys' thoughts on this? Well, good old Kanye. Oh, God. He is, he's a bit of a crazy person. And that's something we're gonna get into here. All right, but the, he was kind of used by politicians, mm -hmm. like, and also people on, like, the right were using yeah. him as sort of like a poster boy, being like, hey, look, look at this guy. Look at him. He's, right. He represents everything we stand for. He's, he's a celebrity endorsing Trump. We should be glad about this. Yeah. Come on, everyone support him. Let's get some merch out. And then <laughs> Kanye was like, why? Yeah. I didn't approve this. Who approved right. this? Yeah. Yeah, I think also think it's, it's interesting because I think right now that's kind of a, a trend of celebrities, um, like Taylor Swift coming out and saying things um, that are strongly political. Kanye, we've looked at Beyonce just recently. Um, so, and I think that's an interesting kind of aspect to the idea of politics in general. Um, yeah. Because I think Americans hold celebrities of any type in such high stand, choking, in such high standing. We do. That it is, um, it's kind of interesting how much power they can have in just like a few tweets or a hat or things like that. Um, <laughs> any hat. <laughs> any hat. <laughs> any hat. Um, top hats are super. Top cool. hats, like yeah, that that's a message right there. But yeah, I think that Kanye kind of maybe liked that fame at first and liked yeah. that attention because he is Kanye and he is a celebrity and he does have an interesting fan base and things like that, you know. And I think that once he realized what was actually happening, it was like, ooh, sorry, that's not what I intended. It was fun while it lasted but please no more, you know? Yeah. I personally think that Kanye really did enjoy, like you said, all he had to do was be like, ha, ah, I like Trump, and everyone talked about him. Mm -hmm. And I don't even think that's just a Kanye thing. I think a lot of celebrities really do crave to be in the limelight, and he found a way to get in the limelight. I think kind of what you said and what you were alluding to is Kanye realized he was being used as a token, and mm -hmm. I I do feel bad for him. It was very much like, hey, you guys know this notable black man who's been like very vocal with the black community his whole life? Look, he's with us now. You should like totally all black people should support us and all those offensive things we've done to black people don't matter because Kanye West likes us mm -hmm. and I think Kanye did take offense to being used as a token <laughs> down to uh, a clothing line was coming out by Candace Owens which was called Blexit which is a reference to Brexit but it was basically saying all uh, black people should leave the Democratic Party and she said uh, she put Kanye's name on it and said that he was behind it Kanye West came out and was like no I, <laughs> I never said that and so, yeah, I think Kanye was starting to realize that he might be used as a token. Do you feel like that was the Republicans' intent, or do you think Republicans were just trying to use him as just a normal celebrity? It had nothing to do with race. He was definitely a token. Yeah. 100%. Uh, just because he's such a popular, like, pop culture icon, yeah. people, people could see him, and they, they feel like they feel justified in their opinion. Mm -hmm. They're like, look at this guy. We, what, what wrongs have we done? We have a black friend. <laughs> Very that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. But little did they know that you can't just make clothing without Kanye's permission. This is the man who sells Yeezys, all right? He sells a torn up white shirt for $300 and people <laughs> buy it. People buy it. So he's not gonna be on any cheap product. No. And I don't blame him. No. Yeah, and I think again, it's, it's, it's kind of the, the Republican Party's um, attempt of peacemaking yeah. in a time where there's not a lot of peace. 
Um, and I think that maybe Kanye was on board with that. Maybe he was like, great, this is a great opportunity for me as a celebrity to use my platform, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of be this link between the hate on both sides and then I think it backfired real fast because it wasn't what he wanted or what he thought was going to happen. Yeah. Um, and in general, I think the, the clothing line as, a, as its own idea is a very a very interesting topic anyway and I don't think I would want my name associated with that. No. Let alone if I was Kanye, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think you definitely have to note the fact that Kanye West, his mass a mass amount of his original fan base, I think it's kind of debatable now, but a mass amount of his original fan base was uh, black people, and he really spoke out for them. He was very outspoken in the past about different politicians how they didn't care about black people. Yeah, well, didn't he say like George Bush? He said George Bush does not care about black people, uh, and that was uh, that had to do with things with Katrina, mm -hmm. and so he's always been very outspoken for the black community, and so. I think maybe originally Republicans were just like, oh, cool, like Kanye West is supporting a Republican guy. Like, we can use that because he's a celebrity. But I do think, it absolutely, especially with this Blexit thing, which may have been the straw that broke the camel's back, I mm -hmm. think absolutely people started using him as like a race thing yeah. of being like, well, I know you guys thought in the past we didn't care about black people, which is not what I, I don't, I'm not saying I agree with that. But I think Republicans do have like kind of a stigma about that. Yes. And so I think they did turn it into trying to break that. But I Another issue that came up with Kanye is <laughs> what were those hand motions? <laughs> they they my Kanye motions. Yeah. All right, got it. Uh, so, uh, an issue we ran into <laughs> is that Kanye West has been very, very outspoken about his mental health over the past several years. And something that's happened recently is Kanye has been very vocal that he is no longer taking medication. He is not being medicated for whatever he has going on. Um, and while he thinks it's a good thing. Uh, it's making him seem a bit erratic in the public eye. Just a bit? Just a bit. Just a bit? And um, some people are taking uh, really harsh jabs at him. Jimmy Kimmel, for example, said that uh, after he spoke out about politics and how he was no longer involved, Jimmy Kimmel joked that the voices in Kanye's head are finally talking some sense. So yeah, he is a man who is mentally ill and people are starting to take shots at him for it. What are your thoughts on that? I think that the media um, is, is really using this on both sides. The Republican media is um, still clearly running with this, but yeah. I also think that um, Jimmy Kimmel, from his perspective, this was a great punchline. This was a great, you know, and, and it, and it um, it pleases his his more liberal audience, you know, yeah. to think that oh, this Republican icon has fallen. You know what I mean? Things like that, um, and which again, I don't agree with. I don't condone that. That's no. unfortunate. Um, but I think that I think Kanye got wrapped up in that attention, and then it's turned into this other situation that's like a real issue. You know what I yeah. mean? Of 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 taking your medication. He's bipolar. You know, like this is a serious thing, and you know, I don't know. I think that it, it got blown up to be some attention media inducing thing mm -hmm. that shouldn't be. It should be something very serious that people pay attention to. Yeah. yeah. And people tend to have, I've, I've noticed like with Twitter especially, people like to dunk on male mental health issues. They do. Like going back to Mac Miller, if you remember what happened with that, people were just kind of, people were, well, people were blaming Ariana Grande they, for yes. that. And they, they were just like not respecting the fact that maybe he had problems. Yeah. Maybe we should start considering a male mental mental health along with all people's mental health. Even as recent as Pete Davidson. Yeah, Pete, yeah. him too. Oh, I forgot about him. Yeah. Um, when him and Ariana Grande broke up, he was canceling shows. He was literally walking through the streets crying, and everyone was like, <laughs> what a loser. Can't believe Ariana Grande dumped him. And so, canceled. Ca canceled. Canceled. But no, and so I agree with both of you that I think it is something that should be taken seriously, that the media is not necessarily, and I think that is a lot to do with the fact that he's a man. I do think it's that we dehumanize celebrities, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Yeah. So like, if it was your friend and someone was making jokes Jokes like <laughs> the voices in her head, you would be like really offended. Yeah. But since it's Kanye and he's not a real person, he's a celebrity, we're all just like, Haha, mm -hmm. he has voices in his head. Right. What a nut job. Yeah. Why do you think we we don't have the same amount of empathy for a celebrity? I think it's because a lot of people have that um, disconnect from the beginning. Well, they're rich. I'm not. Cool. They have this fancy house. I sure as heck don't. Cool. You know, every, everything that makes a person a celebrity. But do they have this leather jacket? Probably. Arguable. 
very debatable. And if we were to look into <laughs> it, Matt, you could be a celebrity. I think so. But yeah, all these things that, that make up the idea of a celebrity are things that are very distancing to people who aren't celebrities. And so I think, um, and especially this, this conversation about mental health that's been happening over the past however many years, yeah. you know, it's increased in importance, which is brilliant. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it's, it's something that's like of the people, you know, like we're all struggling and we can talk about it, but not the celebrities because they're perfect anyway, you yeah. know? So they're rich, they have a car, they have a, a fancy house. Why would they be sad? They can't be sad. They can't have issues. They can't, you know, like that's that's our stuff. We're the ones who are suffering, you know? And so, which is a terrible mentality to have as well um, because they are people, of course, and I think you could go into a whole dissertation about the effects that being a celebrity has on your mental health, yeah. you know? But yeah, I think, it's, I think it's very unfortunate that it's gotten twisted this way. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, there are, there are a lot of problems with uh, just people not really giving respect to celebrities. Yeah. Because, like, especially, again, on Twitter, because Twitter is a hive mind of crazy. Oh, yeah. Uh, there, any anytime celebrities will tweet out something, if it's something the fans don't like, they just get attacked and canceled and sent to the shadow realm yeah. for no real good reason. And we stop at some point, you know, that has to take a mental toll on them. Like, right. there's only so many times you can say, whatever, that's just some guy. When it's a bunch of some guys saying the same thing to you, it's like, oh man, what if they're right? Well, and I think Kanye is a perfect example of that, where Kanye his whole life has been criticized pretty heavily for different opinions he's held or different things he's done. And I'm not saying Kanye is without fault. Kanye, in my opinion, has done some pretty <laughs> douchey things. But I think. I think he is an unwell person who deserves respect and help. Mm -hmm. And I think just because, like you said, we live in this cancel culture, that at some point Kanye said something that everyone has been offended by. Mm -hmm. And so rather than care about helping someone, we're all just willing to just throw him aside and be like, ah, no, he's crazy and a loser and I don't care about his help. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. Why should I care about the rich person? I mean, Sorry. what? He's got money. He's, a he's got he's got a ton of songs. Who you know cares? who else has money but not songs? Logan Paul. He had, he does have songs. I was say. He's a musician. Have you not heard his great music? <laughs> Please don't listen. <laughs> he's he's, a, he's a musician. It's classics. Uh, I mean, just like Jake Paul. Uh, <laughs> But hey, hey, we're gonna go in without bias here. Maybe they're great guys. Maybe Let's find they're out, new you know? Mozarts. <laughs> Let's discuss it. Let's because Logan Paul recently did an interview where he talked about how he hates being hated. And I do hate you, Logan. <laughs> So there goes our, our non-biased agreement here. But it's fine. Come on, like, come on, Matt. Okay, okay, fine. We're professionals Re here. Reset button. Uh, I'll discuss it fairly. Logan Paul, who I hate, hates being hated. <laughs> <laughs> He has been detailing in the interview his struggles from the past where he wanted to give context to the Suicide Forest video and all his douchey accolades that he's been collecting over the years. <laughs> and yeah. he wants just one more chance. So what are your guys' thoughts on this? How many chances have we given him? Too many. <laughs> how many How many times does he have to make an apology video? And you know, people like Jax Films, jokes about this mm -hmm. with frequent my apology videos that are all just like satire, sat, sat, satire? satire of yeah. Logan Paul and his dumb antics right. where he'll get caught doing something stupid like tasering rats. And, they were dead rats. And, oh, I'm sorry. Dead rats. He was tasering dead rats and, he's, and people are like, this is like borderline sociopathic behavior? Yeah. And he's like, I'm sorry guys. I want to be a good role model for all the 12 year old children who watch my program, uh, I want to let them know that it it's not actually okay to go and disrespect foreign cultures, all right? Mm -hmm. the, I was actually, this whole this whole suicide forest thing was actually about suicide awareness, guys. Come on. So I filmed a me? corpse. L look at my hair. Don't you believe me? It's all about the hair. It's all about the hair. <laughs> Give that man a comb. <laughs> I feel a lot of anger once again. Because I'm from both angry. Of you. Yeah, no, I get it. But I think my takeaway from the very beginning is this this quote of his that he hates being hated. Fantastic, don't we all, you know? And so that's where I would say, all right, well then let's look at why people are hating you. They're yes. not just hating you to hate you, which like maybe they are, you know, but like 98.9% of the time, 
there's something to people's disgust with him or their their mild displeasure with the things he says or does. You know? I hate you for everything you are. And the then person. there's Matt, you know, and and we just kind of have to take that with a grain of salt as well because it's Matt, you know. <laughs> but like at the same time, you can you can be mad that you're a celebrity and that some people don't like you, but let's take into consideration why they don't like you and let's let's think respectively about our actions, you know. Um, Maybe it's the, the education major in me, but like, do we need to sit down and talk about it? You know, like, I don't know. Like, do you, do you, yeah. I, let me ask you, do you think that Logan Paul is capable of self-reflection with all of this money and all of his adoring fans who will go tooth and nail to defend him regardless of what terrible thing he does? Mm -hmm. And they'll just accept any a PR apology that was ghostwritten by three different marketing exec executives. People, they'll just just eat it up like oh we love you low gang for life hashtag low gang yeah and then that's just a wave of that is there could he ever actually self-reflect on his problems here's where I'm gonna play devil's advocate mm -hmm. didn't we just discuss about how we should be taking celebrities mental health into consideration and not canceling them and things like that not that I'm here to say that Logan Paul is my hero and that I am part of the hashtag low gang because I am not <laughs> please do not quote me on this alright so you're a Jake Pollard? But, but no, I'm also not a Jake Pollard, please. Um, but I will say, I don't know, there's a fine line between Logan Paul is the scum of the earth. Yeah. And Logan Paul has done some pretty awful things and said some pretty awful things and is probably doing a lot of things for the money um, and the, the fame and um, the celebration that he gets from his 12-year-old viewers. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't want to bring up his brother because this is a whole other situation, mm -hmm. but you know, the Shane Dawson YouTube series that just occurred um, yeah. about his brother kind of led to the conclusion that Logan has some issues that have reflected not only on him, but on his brother and the way they both act. And so I would argue that like, there's a there's a there's two sides to the coin, you know? And yeah, yeah he hates being hated, but let's not um, jump to the conclusion that like, we need to be, yeah attacking him, you know? And again, listen. I understand the guy has some issues. <laughs> I would like to say mm -hmm. that you're very correct. And I do hate Logan Paul, but I do, I sympathize heavily with Logan Paul because I think something that you both brought up is I don't think he can learn it. I don't no. think he will ever learn because this is a man who has unfortunately never had to face a consequence in his life. And while that seems like a good thing, I genuinely feel bad for him. Well, and part of that comes from his fame. Yes. You know? Um, and I think if he was any normal kid, he would have gotten in some serious trouble, mm -hmm. at least with his parents, God hope, you know, right. uh, God hope. for filming a dead body, you know, not that every teenager gets into that, but right. you know, I, ju I just, I don't know. I think his fame has also made him who he is. Yes, I think instead, just because of the money and the fame and the things that come with it being who he is as a person, mm -hmm. I, we've even seen interviews with his father where his father's just like, my son does nothing wrong, he's perfect. No one can hold this kid accountable, yeah. and I feel bad for him that because mm -hmm. he will never grow out of this, and he's going to continue to embarrass himself, because yeah. he is making an ass out of himself in front of the entire world, and no one, because he has these adoring fans, no one is telling him to stop. Yeah. I do sympathize with him yeah. for that. Yeah. Similarly to how like get, like companies can become too like famous too quickly, mm -hmm. like another company we're going to be talking about really shortly who became too famous too quickly. Uh, Logan Paul, he never like grew up normally. Yeah, and he he was famous from the start. Yeah, when he was when he was in high school, he started Vine, and that's where he gained most of his following, which then grew with YouTube. So he he doesn't know like failure. He doesn't right. accept failure, and I I mean that's admirable in a way. Mm -hmm. But he should really like if he wants to stop being if he wants if he hates being hated so much, he should seek out help. Like, and not like, like a, a sad apology video <laughs> with like sad dramatic music with like a speech written by someone else. He needs genuine mental help. Mm -hmm. We're sorry. We're sorry. We're so sorry. And you know, I know that I caught that old woman on fire, but <laughs> I thought it was funny. And I just wanted to, like, to give you all a good time and a good experience. I just want to spread love in the world, man. And you know, she looks so flammable. So, like, <laughs> and if we could all smash that like button. Smash that like button, ring subscribe that, to ring that bell. <laughs> subscribe, follow me on Face, Twitter, Gram. 
<laughs> I'm gonna be doing an Instagram live later where I reply to you guys for giving me. So thanks, hashtag Logan. <laughs> Logan for life. But another issue that's come up that kind of relates to this is not only do people forgive him too quickly, people won't stop talking about him. Mm -hmm. And so something that could be seen as just a publicity stunt, because I feel like it is kind of a trend, is yeah. he starts to lose popularity, and so he does some crazy thing, and everyone talks about him, and then he apologizes, and repeat ad nauseum. Um, and so, do you think that news outlets are the problem for talking about Logan Paul? For aren't, giving him that platform. Aren't we talking we about are. him? Do you think we are the problem? We're the problem, Matt. That's fair. Specifically, you're the problem. But we're collectively <laughs> the problem. That's very fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I, I do kind of agree, because like we were talking about with Kanye, it goes back to this idea of fame, and there are like narcissists, you know, people like that who feed off of this popularity, and whether that's negative attention, you know, mm -hmm. or positive attention, I think people, and I think more people than we like to admit, um, live off of that, you know? And I, and as much as Logan, I'm sure, does not appreciate, you know, like, the, some of the backlash he receives, he gets enough support from his devoted followers for everything he's ever done yeah. that he feels good about it. And, and again, I pity him for that because I think that's something that he just doesn't understand how to, um, to garner positive attention in a way that um, is helpful for the people around him, you right. know, and don't, doesn't tear down um, people. Yeah. Yeah. And I would have to agree with you guys. I think the media, I'm torn, because on the one hand, I do think we're the problem, and I feel disgusting for saying it, but just like, I know that me talking about Logan Paul is only gonna get Logan Paul more exposure, but on the one hand, when I put Logan Paul as the topic in these videos, more people watch them, and that's disgusting on my part, but that's just how the media works. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I do feel a need, and I feel like the thing that a lot of media outlets would argue is that you have to talk about what is relevant yeah. and is what is important. Mm -hmm. So Tanner, I know you said that we are the problem. What do you see on that end of the spectrum? I think we're just, it's part of that we're giving like all the things he does too much exposure. And I think like with certain things like Suicide Forest, yeah. it needs to be talked about. Yes. Because it's absolutely wild. Yeah. That sort of thing is incredibly disrespectful to the point of like no return. Like he should not have come back from that. And he did anyways. Right. <laughs> but stuff like him commenting that he hates being hated. And even just, I mean, tasering dead rats is weird. <laughs> I don't condone it. That needed to be talked about. That was <laughs> That was really inhumane. <laughs> it was it was inhumane, but it wasn't necessarily like b big major. I see what you're saying. Thing, and we we still gave him exposure for that. We're giving him exposure for this uh, terrible quote that he made. Every single <laughs> apology gets dunked on by people on the internet. Yeah. It just gives him more exposure, and it just rallies his fan base behind it does. him. Does they got to defend their king, Logan? They have to defend him with their, their Twitter accounts. All the eggs. <laughs> yeah. All of the eggs. And not to get too political, but what else do I do on this show? Uh, Donald Trump, I think, is a prime example of when the media constantly like attacks someone for what they do, even if that thing is like gross and stupid by most standards, when a fan base that is rabid sees them being criticized constantly, they just buckle down. They don't consider. I think they just buckle down. So I, Definitely. I can see what, where do you fall? Do you think it's a problem? or it's important to report on these things? I, I think like you said, the, the news and any media outlet, their job is to talk about what's relevant, what's happening, and what, what applies to their viewers. Um, and I think that Logan, especially the Suicide Forest incident, yeah. that was relevant to a lot of people yeah. who, are, who are either struggling with suicide, um, suicidal thoughts, um, know somebody who has committed suicide, anything like that, you know, that was an insensitive thing that he did, a very disgusting and insensitive thing that he did. And so I think part of the 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 role that, that news and media outlets can have is saying, hey, this isn't cool, you know, and, and we're sorry to the people that this um, affected negatively, but like, this was not cool and we need to put them on blast for that, you know, and so, um, yeah, it gives him a platform, but he also has enough of a platform on his YouTube page yeah. anyway that it's not, we're not taking away anything if we don't right. talk about it. He's still doing whatever he wants to do because he's got the whole 
14 to 16 year old male it's not, viewing population it's supporting It's not like it, us know? talking about yeah. it here on Pop Tabs where maybe a couple hundred people will see it. It's right. really going to make Logan Paul's But career. you know what? We like you, a couple hundred I people. love you yeah, guys. What's up? Thank you, really. You're my whole heart. You're the reason I get out of bed in the morning and stop crying for just a little bit. <laughs> but you know who is crying right now? Who? Anyone who has to deal with Riot Games, what a company. <laughs> Including the player base. Yeah. Source, am a player of their single game. They I have, cry every night. They have multiple, but only one's good. Uh, so Riot Games, the company behind uh, League of Legends, is facing a, uh, a class action lawsuit against two employees, one former and one current, over gender discrimination in the workplace. Uh, it highlights a bunch of issues from like pay gaps to refusals for promotion, ignoring harassment, and a culture that suppresses women. Uh, this is not crazy mind-blowing to a lot of people because it's a video game company. And as we've discussed on Pop Tabs before, video games tend to be a very toxically masculine place. So what are your initial thoughts on this? Riot Games is a tech bro company. And I mentioned before that they grew too fast too quickly. And a lot of people will excuse their culture for that because essentially the co-founders of Riot Games, Mark Merrill and Brandon Beck, Mm -hmm. They're just kind of like, oh, both their names are alliterative, by the way. That's weird. <laughs> Unrelated. But but that's what's important today. If you take away anything, <laughs> it's that both the co-founders of right. Riot they, Games' names are alliterative. Yeah, so. but, it's, but they're, they were essentially like college frat bros yes. that made a successful video game off of the, the, uh, the skeleton that uh, Dota All-Stars had. Mm-hmm. And so they built their company around the culture that they wanted to have as college frat bros, which doesn't necessarily translate well into a successful business, which is why they're draining money right now. And it does not translate into a very good workplace, which is why they're getting sued. Yeah, yeah. Ellie, you're a woman. (laughs) Correct. (laughs) What is your opinion? Because you have a better view than the two of us do. Do you think these kind of things are common in a workplace? Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's the short answer. The long answer is, um, first of all, I'm, I'm super glad that these two employees um, spoke out because mm-hmm. I know that doesn't happen a lot, which is another thing that doesn't get talked about, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure, 100% sure that this happens frequently in all types of situations. And so for the, for the two of them to have, first of all, a class action lawsuit, love that that's that's Genuinely. not they're not messing around um you know i think that's that's super important and i think it's something that we need to be paying attention to and discussing because it doesn't get enough um it doesn't get enough attention you yeah. know and it's something that i'm sure is is very relevant throughout any type of company throughout any type of work environment you know and so yeah as a woman i'm like good for you hope this goes someplace because that's the other side of it you know yeah. that it's 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 turning into this situation that seems to never end actually go anywhere yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah and I'd, I'd like to point out if you're wondering if riot games was trying to cover this up yes 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 they are <laughs> and yes they have been the original kotaku article that came out mm-hmm. not this one but the original one that talked about sexism and riots work yeah this comes about three months after there was an investigation by kotaku be, about uh just kind of gender discrimination within the workplace yeah so so this is this comes at this comes after that and that original post on the League of Legends subreddit was the top post for a while it was like sitting at like 4,000 something upvotes and then it just disappeared yeah it just disappeared the mods removed it because it's not related to League of Legends and this new this new article has not appeared at all yeah. on the subreddit like this class action lawsuit which was at the which was near the top of our games which is the gaming discussion subreddit uh, it was at the top of that with a sizable number of comments and upvotes. But for our League of Legends, the community dedicated to the one game Riot has is just, they don't know anything about it because probably because the mods are censoring it. We don't have any proof of that, but the mods have done it in the past. So, and the, rod, and the mods have, we know they're connected to Riot. Yeah. There's, we have plenty of evidence that the mods are connected to Riot and that they work with Riot yeah. to promote posts. So they're definitely censored. Yeah. Which is great. Thank you, Riot Games. <laughs> I think what we have here is, like you said, a company that grew too fast with kind of a hyper-masculine culture and they also have to be, in what is my opinion, the most male-dominated and woman-exclusionary company or uh, business, which is video games. <laughs> and so I think 
they have, again, kind of on the never facing repercussion things. Up until very recently, video games have not really had to deal with kind of this concept of inclusivity. And so I think this company has just been used to and is buckling down on this idea of preserving men to the point where one of the higher ups, when brought this idea of inclusivity, uh, told one of the women in the lawsuit that diversity should not be a focal point in the design of Riot Game products because gaming culture is the last remaining safe haven for white teen boys. So, Stab in the heart. where do you guys think that comes? From. Gamers rise up. Rise up. <laughs> fight fight against the Chads. Gang weed. <laughs> Josh, I mean, <laughs> that's over my head. I play Nintendo games. <laughs> I don't know all that jazz. But where do you think this kind of idea that they have to preserve this space for white teen boys is coming yeah, from? Yeah, I don't know. I, ca I can't even listen to you say that without rolling my eyes. Just no. if that puts any perspective onto what I have to say about that. But I, I just don't know. I think that right now to come out and publicly say that mm -hmm. is one of the most insensitive and probably ignorant things they could have done. Um, especially now you know it's yeah. i think it's pretty ignorant and insensitive regardless um but there we're living in a time where like you shouldn't say like that's not an okay thing to yeah. publicly promote and i think that's that's something that if you were um i am not but if you were a woman who was into gaming that's something that would i think really offend you and probably hurt you to think that a company that you may be very into um has this type of mentality towards their own co-workers and then what does that say about you know their fan base you know they, like their whole thing of this is for the white teen boys well thank you very much i'm a white teen girl you know <laughs> like yeah. i guess i will never be playing this game again that's that's not productive at all yeah yeah and to to explain why i said those strange things before the start of the second <laughs> it was a whole new language yeah uh there's i i hope it's purely ironic uh -huh. but there's a movement movement on the internet where so if y'all remember gamergate i do it's an extension of that uh, -huh. uh uh, where where gamers gamers uh, believe gamers. that they're they're being they're being oppressed by society and they need to they they need to preserve their their pure gaming atmosphere. They need to get rid of the SJWs in the game industry. You hear me? They need to get rid of all the all the female game characters and oh. all the di diversity in games. <laughs> And this has been a problem for a long time, okay? Like with the bio, like Bioware got yes, attacked it for it. Specifically, I remember Bioware getting attacked for it uh, because they had people who were like, "Why don't we like this? What, we like diversity in games. What's your problem with it?" And people were like, "Stop politicizing my video game." So listen. Again, not to get political, but just going off of that, I think what's happening here, and what we're just describing... <laughs> what's happening here, Matt? ...is for a very long time, there was only space for white teen boys, and just, you know, the, there was only things for the majority. There was not a lot of spaces for the minorities. And in recent years, we have made fantastic, fantastic strides in being more inclusive. And so for the first time, people who have only ever been the majority their whole life are having to share those spaces. They're not having those spaces taken away, but they have to share them. What a and concept. Yes, <laughs> and like a child who did not have to share toys growing up their whole life. Like Logan Paul? Like Logan Paul. They are reacting terribly. Mm -hmm. And so I I don't th think that this is the proper way to react, but I do understand why they are reacting this way. Do I think that makes it okay? No, but I do get it, I suppose. <laughs> I, do, you can cognitively comprehend. I can, I can see it. Whether or not you, you accept can, it. You can yeah. do the bizarre mental gymnastics they have to right. do yeah. to reach the conclusion that they're being oppressed by society. Now, yes. <laughs> now, something that should be noted, though, is that the way the media is kind of going about this is interesting because I was reading through a lot of different articles and I read through the entire uh, court case. And the main things people are focusing on is the quote. I saw a lot of people talking about the language that is used in the workspace, which uh, one of them quoted that, like, in the span of like three months, they used the word dick 
over 500 times. And so it's kind of like masculine language in the workplace. And I've seen a lot in there about the pay gaps. But there's a lot more serious things in this court case. Mm -hmm. The most notable one is was an employee was allowed to keep his job after drugging and raping a fellow employee. And media outlets aren't really reporting on that. And I don't mean to get all tinfoil hat and accusation-y, but I think that's very, very odd. Why do you think the media is reporting on what could be described as the lighter crimes being committed by Riot? Because Riot's a big company. Riot has a lot of connections. They're owned by Tencent, which is the biggest Chinese like publishing company mm -hmm. they have their they have a huge foothold in the industry esports especially riot has a huge part in uh, a lot of people might be a little little too afraid to like step on riot's toes because riot has riot has people backing them yeah which is concerning from the company that farted on people's faces in meetings which happened yeah in real life and i, I don't that. understand why no no. Why yeah. do you think someone wouldn't want to do that? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And I think another um, alternative or a supplement to that idea as well is that, um, again, like like we've said, that's a very, it's a very much darker um, allegation. Um, and I don't think that the media wants to be swamped with more things like yeah. that right now, which is super, again, super unfortunate. And I, again, commend these employees for doing their very best, you know, to get this out there. Um, but I can imagine their personal heartbreak or, or the, the heartbreak of the person who was drugged and raped by this other employee to yeah. now have to um, to have to fight for even that story to be heard is, yeah. is so heartbreaking. Um, but I think it's because, again, we're in this time of media um, where there's a lot of these stories, you know, yeah. and I think um, very unfortunately um, the people who consume this media, the people, you know, yeah. have gotten turned off by that. That's not that's not shocking news anymore. No. It's commonplace, which is awful, you yeah. know? But but I think that's the situation that we find ourselves in where it's more fun to talk about other things than than this. The media would prefer to mention things that are no longer um, not relevant. You know? I think that's exactly what it is, is it's just easier and it's nicer and people want to read it. Because trust me, I get it. I, I work in the journalism field and I, we're surra I'm surrounded by media all day and I read through these stories yeah. all day, every day, for so many hours a day. And you do, you get exhausted mm -hmm. by reading about the rapes and talking about the, the druggings and the violence and all that stuff. And so if you can just make a story that's getting the same idea across, but instead you get to talk about a funny quote where some dude says that video games are the only safe space for a white teen boy, yeah. I can get why you'd want to go for that path. And readers would rather read that kind of thing uh, but I do think it's unfortunate that that's our job and what yeah. a job it is it's an exhausting job but, but it's, it's a, it's a, a valiant fight because yeah, what is. other way are we is this story you know gonna get out because I think these these little situations where where the media can say all right here's what's happening but here's what you're not hearing mm -hmm. and it's just as important yeah. if not more you know and yeah. you know what at the very least Kotaku's talking about it and shout outs to Kotaku they've been killing it they're recently. doing yeah. really great like People, people used to, to be really mean to Kotaku because they put out a lot of dumb fluff pieces, but now they're doing like hard-hitting journalism and no yeah. one else is. And really, God bless you, Kotaku. Honestly. <laughs> I, I respect you, especially if you kill Riot Games. I would appreciate that personally. There's also that. <laughs> but what are your guys' clothing thoughts on this story or anything else we talked about today? Uh, well... Hmm. I, I, I was going to say something about Riot. Oh, right, right. I remember now. Okay. So the best part about this Riot Games discrimination story is that in this year, this year alone, they have successfully managed to discriminate against both men and women at the same time. Shout out to them. They've done it. That's They've a reached quality. quality. Talent right there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think in general, um, all of these stories have this interesting connection of, of media and attention and whether whether that's something that we want to think more about. They get do, all confused, don't they? I totally did know? that on purpose. Yeah, you did great, Matt. That's nice. great. You're such a great host. Um, <laughs> but, but they do. We, we've talked a lot about um, the role that media plays in, in garnering attention for people on good and bad things. And so, you know, maybe, you're, maybe your food for thought is, what do you think? You know, which yeah, is what? really, really good, profound food for thought. But, you know, 
Yeah. Yeah. I think Riot Games, please employ more women. Logan please. Paul, please get a job. Please. And uh, to Kanye West, please get help. But please. to you guys, <laughs> please have a nice yeah. day and thank you for watching. I've been your host, Matthew Yap. Joining me today was Ellie Kirkpatrick. Tanner Kinney. Thanks, guys. Okay. Because uh, the legendary Pokemon in Gen 5 get really ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but I've always said that. You've never played a video game that's not Pac-Man. Um, did you mean Mario Kart? I love I Mario meant to Kart. say Mario Kart, it would have been a better joke. I love Mario. Yeah, Pac-Man is niche. Yeah, come on.